is there lower hanging fruit uh, among the reform options you would consider? I guess I'm thinking, might this sort of start with hospitals in particular or hospitals and universities or universities or where would you first dip your toe in this water or, you know? Well, I, yeah, I've, I've had this discussion with members of Congress because there is interest in this and they they have held hearings about nonprofit hospitals. They've done some hearings in the past about credit unions. And I would like them to set down basic rules that apply broadly rather than trying to target specific industries. You know, a lot of a, a lot of conservative members of Congress right now want to go after those universities who are all woke and then, you know, allowed all those uh, uh, protests about Palestine and whatnot. That may feel good, but I would prefer to see us apply rules that are applicable across the board. So it doesn't look like you're cherry picking and going after, you know, the weakest link or the one that gets you most political attention. I think rules have to be uniform and across the board so that no one feels like they're being picked on and they feel that at least there's a level playing field that applies to everyone. Yeah. Okay. You got an example <laughs> of such, you gave an example of such a rule, but when even going after, well, I don't want to say going after because that violates your rule. But g g give me a universal rule that wouldn't be considered anti an attack on the left in the university context. If you're going after all large endowments at universities, you're going to be considered to be going after liberal higher education. No, I, 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 oh, I, if 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 you let's let's say we're going to tax any income generally that is not from a charitable source, you know, from alumni, yeah. and you're going to tax broadly all income from investments. I mean, Tax Foundation has, we have an investment, so we get some tax-free income from that. Um, no, our income should be taxed, you know, our investment income should be taxed like anyone else's. So yeah. that would apply broadly to both universities, hospitals, Nonprofits like the Tax Foundation and uh, private foundations, huh? And private foundations and private foundations, yeah. and which which are already taxed at a small level anyway. Yeah. Um, but that that should be a more universal thing. So, so that, and, and other things like ticket sales, you know, um, or or like the the um, March Madness, you know, which gets millions of dollars, you know, from ticket sales from their uh, tournament. Uh, TV ad revenue, I would tax all of that. That's all business-related income, uh, to be honest with you. I mean, the, those are basically, they can call themselves, uh, you, know, uh, you know, amateur athletic, you know, associations, but they're really uh, sports and entertainment businesses these days, and that should be taxed. Yeah. It's often the case that people who propose, contemplate actions like this will here you can't do that you're going to be going after churches and that's a violation of the first amendment you you, you, you can't shouldn't churches be able to make more money with their investments or <laughs> would you be neutral on churches and just apply the same rule to them or do they get any leeway in your uh... yeah well i in, in my paper i ignore churches altogether and because it it does get into some sticky areas where churches should not, and, and even currently, churches are not allowed to own a business and get royalty or profits from that business tax-free. Um, a, a church uh, doesn't pay taxes on all the donations that it gets from the con congregation. Um, it often gets a property tax abatement, etc. But if a church owns a legitimate business like the apartment building next door yeah. and gets rental income, it should pay tax on that like every, and it does like everybody else. Yeah. Uh, how about the property? I'm on the state and local property taxes now. Yeah. Group. Is that a bigger problem than the regular old federal tax one? Or what would you do about that or recommend to cities and municipalities that they consider doing or, or uh, is uh, how, how big of a problem is that? It is a very big problem. And I mentioned uh, hospitals early on. There are a lot of stories uh, I've seen in local press where 
a nonprofit hospital buys the for-profit hospital down the street, and now that property becomes tax exempt. And so local communities are out millions of dollars worth of property tax income because of that transaction. And I think that that's a real, a real problem. In universities, it's probably an even bigger problem because universities, um, by their nature, often have sprawling campuses that are tax-free. Uh, there have been stories in the New York Times that Columbia University, for instance, is the largest landholder in Manhattan. Yeah. <laughs> All yeah. with nonprofit and uh, uh, untaxed land. I mean, that's that's really that hits the bottom line of these local communities. Yeah, and I think I read somewhere, either in your paper or maybe an article about your paper, there's a little overlap between universities and hospitals. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, what are we to make of that? Why is that? Because uh, they see how good it is, <laughs> tax wise, <laughs> or by the way, property tax wise. Yeah. yeah, well, it's been, you know, the hospitals are often attached to universities. So you have New York University Hospital, you yeah. have Columbia University Hospital, et cetera. Uh, here in Washington, D.C., we have Georgetown University Hospital, George Washington University Hospital, yeah. Howard University Hospital. And you and know, Scott, all, I see a lot of these logos uh, on the uh, uh, during athletic events. They're always yes. with a university hospital sponsor of the stadium in which they're with tax exemption, you know, giving me my football entertainment, it seems. Uh, yes, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right. Now, do these require statutory? I'm on the federal now. I'm away from the local property taxes. Uh, yeah. Change a statute to define charity more narrowly, or could this be done regulatorily? Or uh, how does one go about, what law do you need to pass or regulator <laughs> do you need to, you know, talk to? Yeah, I think there are a lot of laws that uh, need to be changed, sadly. Um, and, you know, the laws have always been rather vague on what it is that is a de determines a nonprofit. And they've tried to do that over the years. At the same time, over the years, they've tried to uh, narrow the focus of what activities or business-like activities that companies can or uh, nonprofits can engage in. Uh, so we have this thing called UBIT, which oh, is made unrelated. It without saying that, but okay, let's do you tell us what UBIT is, which you were about yeah, to. Yeah, it's the unrelated business income tax. And there's a whole set of activities that um, an organization can be, a nonprofit can be taxed on if it is outside of its general mission. So, for instance, a really good example of that that's often used in these um, settings. Uh, the IRS actually uses this in its its, its examples, is a, um, a museum that has a gift shop. Now, if it sells a um, souvenir or a local map, it would pay tax on that because on that income because that's unrelated to its normal activities. However, if it sells a coffee cup with a Monet on it, that's considered income that's related to its activities of promoting the arts. And so it would not pay tax on that. This is kind of a strange area because the things that are allowed are a lot larger than the things that are prohibited. Um, so like the NCAA is allowed to make a million dollars, a billion dollars a year in TV revenues because it's related to its mission of promoting amateur athletics. And so I would get rid of this whole notion of UBIT and simply try to tax any business-like income that nonprofits engage in. Mm -hmm. And you're, well, for fun, I wanna ask, a flat tax would solve all these problems, wouldn't it, a true flat tax? G generally speaking, yes, yeah. yeah. Okay, but that's yeah. kind of pie in the sky, I guess, if I'm gonna be a realist and say, what are you gonna bargain? Uh, but okay, uh, just to get that in there for fun. In, in, a, in a way, we're kind of, we've kind of moved in that direction. You know, the 2017 Tax Cuts and Jobs Act increased the standard deduction to such a level that only about 9% of all taxpayers now itemize, which means fewer and fewer people are taking advantage of the um, charitable deduction. And so we are getting fairly close to that sort of flat tax standard. 
the, the challenge is on the other side of the equation with the nonprofit organizations. Here's kind of an interesting thing that a lot of people don't realize with the whole idea of tax exempt um, economy. All of this income is outside of the tax code. So the donor gets to deduct the contribution. The organization doesn't is not taxed on the income. So all of that transaction is outside the income tax. And it's similar for corporations, you know, for ABC, which has the contract for the uh, uh, March Madness, gets to deduct the royalty payments that it, it provides to the NCAA as a business expense. NCAA doesn't pay tax on the income. So that billion dollars is completely outside of the income tax system. And that's that's the, when, when we talk about tax fairness, we have to kind of talk about that because that means you have this entire economy that's outside of the normal tax system. And if we're looking at fundamental tax reform, we've got to consider trying to bring that back into the tax base uh, in order to both provide fairness, more revenues, and some equal justice. And speaking of more revenues, your, your paper estimates and probably your book too, that uh, if this was applied, if your thinking was applied and there'd be the fairness in the way that you're thinking about it and discussing, yeah. there'd be a nearly $40 billion annual uh, amount in new tax revenues. Uh, sometimes in politics, you need to say, if you're a legislator, that will be devoted, that gain, as it were, uh, yeah. to cause X, Y, or Z. W would you uh, have an X, Y, or Z to suggest be said in this negotiation? Or would the should the gain just go to the general... Fisk. Well, I, I would actually use that or as as part of a broader tax reform. Now, yeah. if we're looking we're looking at next year, at the end of next year, the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act expire, at least most of the individual provisions. There are a lot of members on both sides of the aisle who would want to increase the corporate income tax, which is which would be a very harmful thing to do or increase the taxes on small businesses or what we call pass-through businesses. Both of those would be bad economics, bad, bad tax policy. But if we expand the tax base into this nonprofit sector, we can avoid raising taxes on other sectors that would be more harmful, provide some balance ac uh, across the industries, and, and um, uh, it would be pro-growth at the end of the day. Yeah. Well, okay, Scott, unless there's something that I have not asked about that you want to give an answer about, uh, I mean, I'm good to go. And anything you'd like to add about the book? What, how much is the book? Well, on Amazon right now, it's on sale for 20 bucks. Oh, um, so get great. it while it's hot. Okay. And, the, <laughs> and yeah. uh, actually, uh, the uh, audio book version uh, is now available. So you know, for those of you who have long commutes, yeah. Or going on vacation, uh, this is a time, a great time to get the audio book, and you can listen to that at your leisure. Do you read the book, Scott, or did they hire an actor? They hired a professional, and you know, I volunteered because my wife says I have a voice made for radio, uh, which I think means that I put people to sleep. Yeah, so no, I think it means you don't look good. Or... <laughs> <laughs> right, I, okay, but the... Well, all right. So Scott Hodge, thanks so much for doing this uh, with us. Uh, appreciate it very much. Thanks, Mike. It's been a pleasure. It's been fun.